cohort. I'm Pam George and today I will summarize chapter one from the book Learning from a Stranger by David Smith. Discuss a few theories that give us insight into Abraham's actions using quotes from the book. Let's dive in. In chapter one, we're introduced to characters found in Genesis 21 to 18. Abraham was a stranger as he moved into Gerar where Abimelech was king. Abraham, maybe because he felt like a stranger, had given into fear and asked Sarah to not reveal that she was his wife. Abimelech took Sarah into his household, and that's when the challenge and the problems began. Imagine the shock when God appeared to Abimelech in a dream and threatened his life, telling him that he had taken the prophet Abraham's wife into his harem. God, in fact, used the king to confront Abraham on his actions. The author David Smith considers it ironic that Abraham the prophet had to hear from God through a foreign king whom Abraham had judged didn't even fear God. The author attributes Abraham's failure to four causes, fear, power, knowledge, and perspective. Abraham had felt threatened and he gave in to the fear. He had just witnessed Sodom and Gomorrah being destroyed, and his trauma had led him to believe that there was no fear of God in Gerar. He felt powerless, feeling as being a stranger in a foreign country, and acted on his past biases and assumptions that the people in that city didn't fear God. This limited his perspective. Smith concludes that Abraham might have been less tempted to defensive dishonesty if his position had seemed more, more secure. I agree with this quote because when safety and security needs are not met, the threat becomes real. In fact, Maslow's hierarchy of needs explains that when a person's physiological and safety needs are not met, their focus is to meet those needs first. Abraham's safety needs were threatened. He felt insecure and unsafe. Abraham made an assumption that there is surely no fear of God in this place and they will kill me because of my wife. This was an inaccurate assumption. Research has shown that people tend to remember negative events. In fact, they stick to their brain like Velcro. Positive experiences, on the other hand, seem to slide off like Teflon. Another model that may explain Abraham's behavior is the Internal Family Systems Model by Richard C. Schwartz. According to this model, managers are parts of our soul that attempt to keep one safe emotionally and help cope. Managers work to keep one from pain. Abraham's fear of man could be his manager part of his soul coming up with a strategy to keep him safe. He had just experienced the trauma of a whole city being destroyed because God couldn't even find one person who feared the Lord. The exile is the vulnerable parts of his soul that he tried to push away. Exiles are often stuck in the past where they hold on to painful memories. Feelings include fear, insecurity, which Abraham probably experienced due to his trauma. Firefighters, on the other hand, work to extinguish pain. Rather than try to prevent pain as managers do, firefighters kick in after a painful event occurs. To extinguish the pain, Abraham's firefighters sought to come up with a plan of self-preservation by protecting himself with a half-truth. David Smith concludes with a quote that gives us some hope. God has promised to bless him, to be his shield, to make his name great, and has told him not to fear. Genesis chapter 20. The divine invitation had been to root his identity and his future in the God who has called him to live by faith and not by the security or insecurity of his cultural location. On, this quote is find, found on page 20. 
Like Abraham, the challenge for us is to trust in God's promises. Authors of the book Boundaries for Your Soul explain that instead of letting our managers, firefighters, or exile take control, we need to learn to let the Spirit lead us. We can let the Spirit of God lead us by choosing creativity, clarity, curiosity, compassion, and confidence when we are faced in a threat. Thank you.